Hey everyone, this is Ross. In today's video, we're once again going to be talking about my coal list. These are varieties of figs that I have been growing in the past and decided to get rid of. Uh, we did do a video about a week or two ago on this very topic. We um, talked about our coal list for 2019. At the end of the 2019 season, we had gotten rid of around 40 to 50 different varieties. Um, and I explained my perspective, my reasoning for doing so. Um, and I think it really helped a lot of you guys out. In that video that we did recently, I noticed that a lot of you guys enjoyed it. Um, some of you guys had contacted me. I also noticed that some of you guys had actually just uh, watched that video longer. It held your attention longer than most of my other videos, um, or at least most of my recent videos. So. Um, I thought this would be a great idea to do this again, um, but to talk about my varieties from prior years. So this this video here is going to be talking about the varieties I got rid of in 2017. You can see we made a post on our figs at the end of the 2017 season, and then we detailed out in pretty good detail and the names of the varieties we got rid of. We didn't do this for 2018, unfortunately, because uh, Pretty much from 2018's onward, I've just been getting rid of varieties and stages. Um, I've really been going crazy and hacking away at trees, um, really realizing, um, you know, what it is that I'm really looking for. As I've gotten more experienced and more mature into this hobby, I've learned that I'm looking for certain characteristics that are very specific, and if it's deviating from those characteristics. It's not inevitably going to make it into the top handful of varieties that are a success here in this climate. Um, so just a quick background, I live in outside of Philadelphia in zone 7A and it's quite humid. We get about 40 inches of rain annually, somewhere between three to five inches throughout the summer. Our fall is very cool, our summer is very short. Um, but our summers can be very warm. Um, so let's kind of get into this. I think this is really gonna help all you guys out, give you guys some perspective. Um, and we'll do a video, I think, on 2018 coming up. I'm gonna do that in a separate thing because it's the information is kind of scattered and all over the place and it would really make uh, this video extremely long. So we're gonna try to make this one a bit shorter. Uh, okay, so the first variety here I got rid of was Brogiotto Nero and um, Brogiotto Nero is an incredible fig. It's one of the best, if not the best. I um, I had heard from Bode. If you read his book, if you go to his website, um, you can read the fact that Noir de Barbantain. It's another fig I have that is very similar in terms of flavor, in terms of size, in terms of perf uh, but not in terms of performance. Um, the Wardy Barbantine is supposed to be similar but earlier and more rain resistant. So I figured why would I have both? Let's go with the one that's supposed to perform better here because we're trying to find earlier varieties and more rain resistant varieties. Um, <clears throat> since this point here, since 2017, I've realized that my Brogiotto Nero, because I still have this tree, most of these varieties as you see in here, and as I talk about up in this post, we turned them into rootstock. We never really put them in the compost pile or gave them away. These are all, a lot of these are current rootstock that I currently use. So I still have my Brogiotto Nero tree if I wanted to reacquire it. What I've realized with this particular tree is that it is not healthy. It has not performed well at all really since I got it I, I think the first year I had it I didn't feed it and it was the one tree that I had missed in my feedings and that was a big mistake because that tree did absolutely nothing that year but since then even feeding it I've realized that it's just not very healthy and I need to basically rejuvenation prune that tree I need to cut it all the way down to the base even as a rootstock but there's varieties on top of it. So this year what I'm gonna do is I have to air layer off the varieties that are on top of it that I like 
just so that they can perform well. I can have them on their own roots or I can graft them again onto a healthier rootstock. Um, but the issue with the Brojoto Nero tree is that it's just not healthy and I need to rejuvenate it to get new shoots from the base that will then replace the main trunk of the tree to have a healthier base, to have a more vigorous base, um, to just overall have a healthier tree. There's something wrong with that tree and it needs to be fully inspected, the roots, the tree itself. Um, so that's what my goal is for this particular tree. Believe it or not, it's haunting me two or three years later, th this tree. So uh, that's why I, I think it's so important, rejuvenation pruning. We talk about that so many, so many times. And I, you know what's weird about it is that if I had maybe had a healthy tree from the beginning, I could have had a better perspective on this particular variety. I would have had a better judgment. I would have had better judgment, um, better estimation as to really how well this variety would perform. It's not just Bode who told who told me or who's written about it in his book and his website that it's that you know Noir de Barbantine is better because it's earlier and more rain resistant but it's also my experience and that my brojoto nero tree didn't really seem to like life it didn't really seem to uh be a worthwhile fig and that was all because it's not healthy so we need to restart that whole thing over again and any real judgment that i've had on this fig prior needs to be completely eliminated so really the only reason I've, I got rid of this in the past, um, or at least I could uh, make sense of this now, is because of what Bode, a very well-respected French fig grower, has, uh, has published. Um, so yeah, isn't that interesting, guys? All right, so Fico Zana. This is definitely a Brunswick type. Um, and for that reason, I had to get rid of it. Brunswick doesn't do well here. It absorbs a lot of moisture. Um, it doesn't really have good enough skin to deal with the humidity and the rain here. Um, I don't know if it splits, at least I don't remember. Um, but Brunswick in general is just a giant no-no. We don't want to be growing Brunswick almost really anywhere. Um, it's one of the worst figs in uh, that's commonly found. I don't know why people still grow it. Um, it kind of reminds me of like a California brown turkey and a lot of brown there's a lot of brown turkey hate out there but I think it's warranted although brown turkey at least is a very highly regarded commercial variety um, when grown in the right climate so I wouldn't even um, I think Brunswick's even a step down from that uh, Feliciano Bianco this is a really commonly found Italian fig because Italian growers really like Breba. Um, they like to have Fiorone as they call them, uh, varieties that will ripen earlier in the season and that's a big deal to them because they don't just want figs during fig time, they're trying to extend the season and Breba is one of those things that they highly, highly regard. In fact, some Italian growers actually prefer Breba over the main crop and um, I think it has something maybe to do with their weather at that time, but also the Breva usually are larger figs and um, Italians love large figs. I don't know why. They are obsessed with bigger figs. Um, well, most people are, but um, definitely not someone in a humid climate should concern themselves in any way with, uh, with large figs. All right, so Gros Monstrous, this is a variety that that um, had fruited for me and I thought it was actually really tasty. Uh, it's definitely along the lines of a you know an Adriatic type, Green Aishia. Um, I don't think the flavor is exactly that, um, but it was a splitter. It doesn't do well in the moisture here, um, so for that reason, got to get rid of it. Um, this is a green Aishia that I probably probably could have just held on to. Um, it was supposed to be a Hanks brown turkey, which is a southern brown turkey. 
Um, it turned out that it was mislabeled, and the best I could identify it was as was a, a green Aishia. Because I didn't know what it was, I didn't know the source of it, um, I decided to get rid of it. But looking back, I could have probably kept this fig, and I probably could have gotten a good crop out of this for a few years if I really wanted to. Um, you know, I still have a handful of these green Aishia type figs or Adriatic type figs like JH Adriatic and Strawberry Verte. You never know. This one could have maybe earned a spot here. It's tough to say. Um, I do have a green Aishia from UC Davis that I once I once had because a, a couple of my friends, actually PA Figs, for those of you guys who watch his videos, Nick is really a big fan of Green Aishia from UC Davis. And I wasn't sure if this Green Aishia that I had acquired was the Green Aishia from UC Davis. There's so many of them that, f that are floating around with that name. It's hard to know the source, where it came from. I wanted the exact same fig that Nick had. And I eventually acquired Green Aishia UC Davis, as it talks about here. Um, and then I ended up getting rid of it. <laughs> oh man and I end up getting rid of that fig because it's just quite late um, it's just a very late variety that I'm not necessarily willing to make um, room for you know I don't have time for these finicky figs these l very late figs unless they're extremely extremely tasty um, like a cold Adam as an example or a black Madeira if it's not on that level, I'm not growing it. Um, okay, so Italian 215, this is a fig that uh, um, a friend of mine and myself had grown for a couple years and it drops figs every year. So it's either a San Pedro or a Smyrna. Um, you know, I don't know how many years it takes. That's like the big argument here, the big issue. Um, that even Harvey may take issue with because if you think about it, you need a certain number of years before you can definitively say that something is a Smyrna or something is a San Pedro or if something's common, right? It takes a while for some of these varieties to hold on to their fruit. And if you don't give it enough time, then you'll never know. But if you, let's say you're five years into it, when is enough time? When is it enough time? That's a big argument that uh, people can have. And at the end of the day, if it doesn't fruit for me in two or three years, then I see no reason to hold on to it. Um, by the way, Italian 215, even if it did fruit, it probably isn't very good anyway. Um, so, you know, just looking at the bigger perspective here, um, it's probably not a fig I want, even if it held on to its fruit. Italian black, this is a black mission type, and this is when I really learned about these black mission types. Let me talk to you guys about these black mission types, because um, black mission is very common. It's found all over the United States. Um, there's a lot of them, even from Europe, um, like Kolar is one name for it. Um, Pion Benice is another name for it. Um, there's so many names for it in Italy, in France, in Portugal, in Spain, um, all over the Mediterranean because it's such a highly regarded commercial fig. It doesn't, um, it's not really subject to manipulation all that easily. So you can really kind of ship it well, ship it easily. People can handle it a bit more rough. Um, it's not as delicate. So for that reason, it's been grown all over the, the world, and it's made its way into the United States hundreds of years ago. And um, it's just a very old fig. Um, and it's so commonly found that I'm finding, at least I found at this time, that there was just so many of them. There was a big, long list of them. There's at least 20 of them that I've counted and um, have studied or researched and I have that list in my spreadsheet for those of you guys who are interested. I have found throughout the years there are some differences within that list. They're not all exactly the same as one variety of whatever it is is growing in a particular location for a certain amount of years. It will start to adapt. It will start to change. 
Um, and some of these do have different adaptations or different genetic characteristics, uh, more so than others. And one of them that I personally really enjoy is Galicia Negra. Um, it's a bit late, a bit later in the season, maybe mid to late, hard to say, but it is very, very good. And I find it to be um, very close to these, but out of all the genetics, <laughs> out of all the black mission types that I've tried, um, Galicia Negra actually is one of the most different from the genetically original, whatever that is, the original black mission. Um, so I think Galicia Negra is really something spectacular and it puts all these other ones absolutely to shame. So even knowing, I mean, not, not really knowing, I didn't know this in 2017, but knowing this now definitely was a good decision. Things like Italian black, um, from Becknell, Italian Black from Dalton Durio, and I think he's in Louisiana. Um, Kathleen's Black is another one. There's just three of them right here in a row. Um, and there's probably other ones on here. LSU St. Gabriel's Black is another one. Um, let's see if we see any others here as we go. Ababaria is another one. This one comes from uh, Portugal. So I got rid of like five of them in that one season because um, I had so many. And I didn't know that they were all pretty much the same fig. It took me a while to figure that out and no one really had pointed that out up until um, that point. It wasn't really uh, common knowledge, unfortunately. Um, okay, so uh, Laterula this was a tissue cultured fig and I just want to make a point about all the tissue cultured figs I've ever grown. Don't grow them. Uh, it seems like Violet de Bordeaux is really the only tissue cultured fig that I still grow and I think is a, a worthwhile fig. All the others seem to revert back to a weird growing habit, um, a weird fruiting habit. They're just immature. They take a long time to mature and as a result, they seem to be a waste of time. Uh, I don't know, to be honest with you, if it really is worth tissue, tissue culturing figs ever. Um, in fact, a guy had approached me one time about sending him genetics so that he could um, tissue culture a bunch of stuff. And to me, it just sounds like the worst idea imaginable because why would I want all these really crappy tissue cultured figs in existence? It just seems like a, a really dumb idea. But um, yeah, so Laterula is one of them that I had at one point and didn't like. Uh, the Red Ruby is another one, or Little Ruby is actually what it's called. Little Ruby, actually, I held on to because I did enjoy the flavor. Um, I just think that this is such a dwarfed fig nowadays. I have it planted, actually, in the yard currently, but I'm going to dig it up in the spring. Um, to me, it just doesn't seem like it's worth growing um, at all. The fig is just entirely too small. And believe it or not, it has a big eye for a small fig, which is very strange. Um, I thought the dwarfing habit could have some potential somewhere, but I just think overall um, dwarfing figs, weaker growth on your figs is a, is a very bad thing to have. Um, it would be, I guess, ideal in a place that has a very small area for a fig. And that would be, I guess, the one place I'd put it. Um, the yellow long neck that was tissue cultured. I never fruited this and I never got to find out if it really... Actually, I did fruit this. I did fruit this. I fruited a couple of these, actually. And I never. it was never really apparent to me. It didn't really seem like it was the actual yellow long neck so at the time I got rid of it and then f and then eventually ended up getting the real thing and I fruited it this year um, so and it was actually very different than the tissue cultured version that I had fruited um, little miss figgy is also another one that is a tissue cultured fig and it is a Violet de Bordeaux eventually we figured this out we didn't we didn't really know what it was um, but on all honesty, it just seemed like a weak grower for me. 
I've had other people say that it actually was very a strong grower for them. Um, but overall, I think this has made a very weak and poor rootstock decision for a number of my trees that I have on Little Miss Figgy. Um, also, there's so many Violet de Bordeaux types out there that I'm growing. Another one actually is the Negretta Unknown from Marius, and this is one I got rid of and now I've reacquired it, believe it or not, because this is one that a friend of mine, I think Frank, is a big fan of this. And because he's such a big fan of it, I said, you know what? Um, he said it's better than the other Violet de Bordeaux types that he's had. So I said, you know what? Let's try it. Let's figure it out. Um, LSU O'Rourke we got rid of. And I think this one was a mistake. I would have actually liked to have kept LSU O'Rourke. I think that um, this would have been worth growing for a while to really see what the deal was. I had a number of friends who had uh, years of experience with LSU O'Rourke and LSU, um, LSU Improved Celeste. Improved Celeste, different forms of Improved Celeste, and they all said that Improved Celeste was the best and that LSU O'Rourke was inferior. But I don't know if that's true. I never figured it out myself. And I actually wish I had this one. Um, but, you know, I'm kind of out of room at this point. So maybe in the end I would have had to, had to have gotten rid of it anyway. But it would have been interesting, I think, to see the characteristics of LSU O'Rourke compared to my improved Celeste that I have for four years in the ground out front. Um I'm, pr I'm sure it would have had very different characteristics in terms of its its growing characteristics. All right, let's keep going here. We're almost done. Um, let's see. Lebanese red bass. This actually is one that I tried to turn into rootstock for years and couldn't get anything onto this. Eventually, I planted this at my neighbor's house. My parents... Play, my parents have a place down at the Jersey Shore. The neighbor, who is an Italian woman, amazing woman, just the cutest little thing. We love her. Uh, we gave her this tree. We pl I planted it out at her house for her. It turned out that this turns in. It turned out to be an English brown turkey, which is a great fig in the ground in a lot of climates, especially colder climates. Um, so she should do well with that. But English brown turkeys, at least here in pots, they're not a good idea. In the ground, I think they're a better idea uh, because of consistent soil moisture. English brown turkeys, as a general rule, and I finally got rid of all of them in 2019, I got rid of every English brown turkey I have because they just tend to split. They don't do well with moisture. They're too late in the season to ripen. Um, and the fruit quality as a result is not that good. So. I don't recommend English brown turkeys to anybody. I don't recommend California brown turkeys to anybody. Um, however, if you are in a cold climate and you wanted a tree in the ground, it could be a pretty decent choice. Um, you know, there's a lot of them, like Soda Sicilian, La Redex brown turkey. Um, there's so many of them, even found throughout Europe. They're all over the place. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Ora. This one is definitely a Smyrna. Um, I don't know anyone that's growing this fig anymore. Um, and there was a lot of Greek figs that came from this guy, Andreas. He was a collector. And um, a lot of them turned out not to be common. And um, I know for sure that uh, Vasilika Melisi which I don't know if Andreas claimed this one to be common, but Vasilika Melisi was another Greek fig that gave a lot of people, without the blastophaga, without the wasp, gave them a lot of trouble, and a lot of us ended up giving up on it. There is a grower in, I think, the Czech Republic who grew this fig for six or seven years, and it dropped for him every single year until the very last year where he had hand pollinated the fig and had realized that of course it is a Smyrna. So I have a feeling and I guess Harvey would tell you otherwise that people just need to be a bit more patient with the Andreas varieties but if you ask me um, 
you never really know until you fruit it outside of a place without the blastophaga. So Harvey has no idea. Andreas really should have no idea. Um, and of course, I have no idea. So no one really knows, but it is what it is. I got to move on with my life. Um, Panache, this one we actually kept and it fruited for me this year. It's incredible. Although it splits and we had to get rid of it at the end of 2019, we finally got rid of it. Paradiso Gene. Um, this is a fig that I probably could have held on to for a while, but I have a friend that lives very close to me, at least uh, over in New York City. And he was telling me that uh, this one has always split for him for a number of years. Um, and as a result, I think he even got rid of it, or at least he got rid of one of his trees. And therefore, I thought, you know what? It's probably not worth my time. It's another Adriatic type. And the Adriatic types we've talked about are Green Aishia, Gross Monstruus. Panache actually is another one as well, Paradiso Gene. While they're all slightly different, they're not exactly the same, they do seem to fill a particular category in that they have green skin, red pulp, very good pulp. They ripen late and they have issues with moisture. So we're trying to find nowadays one that ripens very early, has a similar flavor, um, and deals with moisture better. So a couple of them that I'm really a big fan of is the Vertolino and the Green Michurinska. The Both of them are far superior. I have no regrets about getting rid of Paradiso Gene. Uh, Persian White from Bass. This is a um, like similar than similar to my White Triana, Canadria, etc., etc., A Triano, those types of figs. I didn't think it was all that great. I didn't give it a whole lot of time. I wish I did. Um, maybe another year, I could have seen the potential for of, uh, of it, like I saw with my white Triana in 2018. But at the end of the day, uh, we have to move on. We have to uh, make a decision. Colat Almadik is very similar, right? Similar to the white Trianas, Canadrias, A Triano. This one I really didn't like, and it seemed to be giant. It seemed to have a weird, large size to it. I know there's somebody out there I saw recently who actually loves this fig, so maybe I was a bit wrong, and maybe I just needed to give it more time. It probably would do better in the ground, as all of these types, I think, do, White Triana, Canadria, and Atriano, because of that consistent soil moisture. Salem White from Bass. This is a, a honey fig that just seemed to just be meh. Really didn't seem to impress me all that much. I'm sure it could have used more time, more maturity. Um, really not impressive. I don't know anyone who really likes it. Sicilian White, very similar to the Qualat Medique fig and the Persian White that we just talked about. Same thoughts, except this one was the worst of the three. It was the largest, the worst to split. Not a good fig. Uh, White Marseille from Edible Landscaping. We actually still have this, and we have it planted in the ground as sort of an experiment. It's also a very hardy tree. So we will see how it does next year, and we'll make a decision on it. But the skin is still a bit bitter, but I don't mind that. I actually think it has a little bit of extra something to it because of that bitter skin. It balances out that sweetness um, really well. Uh, this was a Stella that turned out to be Brunswick. And as a result, I got rid of it. Brunswick's a waste of time. Sweet Diana, this is a Celeste type um, that my buddy Danny found in somewhere around New York City. Um, it's not the tastiest fig, as Celeste really isn't. At least plain old Celeste. But there is some Celeste heirlooms out there that I'm sure are above and beyond the others. This one um, wasn't really good doing it for me didn't seem like it was going to be earning a spot here for Doan, this is a, a actually quite a good fig that i would recommend for you guys in drier places a lot of these so far i wouldn't recommend to anybody um you know i would recommend brojoto nero gross monstrous green aishia 
Um, maybe there's very specific situations where I'd recommend these. Negretta Unknown. You know, if you have the wasp, go ahead and grow Aura. You know what I mean? Um, but for certain, Verdone is a fig that deserves a place in drier climates. Um, because it is very good. It's a really highly regarded Italian fig. Um, however, it does seem to split quite often. So as a result, it's also quite large too. And it just doesn't seem to lend, that doesn't really seem to lend itself well here. Um, Vern's Brown Turkey, this is a weird fig. It's stupidly productive, puts out more figs than any other fig I think I've ever seen. And the person who gave it to me said that he had like a crazy amount of Brava one year, like 150 Brava off this tree. Um, it's also very tasty, except I can't get the fig to hold on the tree. It just keeps falling off the tree prematurely. And as a result, it doesn't get to that perfect ripeness level. For whatever reason, I think it may just need a, a lot more water than most varieties. I don't know, but uh, it probably should be grafted now that I think about it. And I wonder if I still have this fig because, oh, I do still have this fig. Um, yeah, I have this one as rootstock. I would, I would be interested to just see how it does on a healthy rootstock. Um, because it is such a really good fig, actually. Um, yeah. White Aishia, this is similar to Laterula and White Marseille, and I just said, you know what? Um, it's probably not worth my time. At least uh, I'm pretty set on this White Marseille here from Edible Landscaping. I think it's a pretty good strain of it, and uh, I think it's worth growing. Yellow Lebanese, very similar to Qualat al Madik and Persian White and Sicilian White, same story. Uh, Raspberry Al Molino, another Smyrna that uh, we weren't entirely sure if it was going to be um, common. And it turned out it wasn't. It tastes uh, similar to Smith, but worse. So for me, I just said, I'm just grow Smith. Gillette. What's the point? What is the point of Gillette, guys? This is probably one of the worst figs. What is the point? Um, yeah, it's like a, it's like a uh, a San Pedro. That's what is the word exactly? Um, it's not fully parthenocarpic. It's really, really strange. Um, uh, what's the exact word? It's not persistent. Maybe it's not persistent. Um, I don't know. It's like an edible capper fig. Let's just say that. It pretty much is like an edible male fig that uh, part of the fig ripens and part of it doesn't. And you're just kind of eating crap. Uh, the fruit quality is pretty inferior. Uh, Bataglia green. It's another Adriatic type. And um, I valued at the time JH Adriatic and Strawberry Verte. Right now, I think Strawberry Verte is just going to beat the rest, and I would consider some others, like uh, Rockaway Green and Launch to Do Cezanne, White Madeira number one. Uh, but I, I know for sure Bataglia, and I, I think I don't have this tree anymore, but I would consider even putting one in the ground because it is very tasty. And then Little Miss Figgy here we covered, so... That's sort of the end here of the coal list from 2017, guys. I hope you guys got some perspective out of this. We learned something. We'll try to come in at you guys with 2018, and uh, we'll try to see. We're going to go through just a giant list of varieties here, and we're going to just go through this and see which ones I had at one point and then got rid of. And um, even on this list we're not going to have a full scope of some of the varieties that I had I had at one point and got rid of. So we're still going to miss some, but it is what it is. And um, yeah, we'll talk to you guys soon. All right. Take care, everybody.